You only live once and you can't enjoy it without crazy. Hi. I had a question on Twitter that I just can't leave alone. Where did everything in the universe come from? That's a big one. All right. To know where I'm coming from on this video, you're going to need just a surface understanding of the concepts of dark energy, although that's sort of very hidden in my meanings and context. I'm not actually going to refer to dark energy. I, I might explain that. I might, I might cover that pretty briefly. Um, gravity as an equilibrium force. Watch my previous video on gravity to know where I'm coming from using um, the analogy of gravity as an equ equilibrium force. Understand that space is a positive pressure environment, and I think that's about it. I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible. All right. So. First, to understand where shit comes from, know that my view of the universe is that it's infinite. So, in my analogy, there is infinite vacuum energy. That, that's, that's a prerequisite to understand where I'm coming from here. To understand where the universe came from, we need to understand particle breakdown. Um, so first I'm going to cover stable particles. What makes a particle stable is orbital interaction. To, to, put, it very, to put, put it as a very, very simple example, an electron orbits neutrons and protons. Without that orbit, no particle. The particle breaks down into its smaller components if the, if the particles aren't interacting with each other. Particle orbits break down, the particle breaks down and into its smaller components. All right, so black holes. Black holes squash shit. All right, now Try not to see black holes as see black holes. No pun intended. But <laughs> try not to see black holes as a funnel into a hole. Okay, it's just not really like that in, in my view. Okay, there's some scientists hold the view that there's a, a rip in the, the, the space-time fabric. I don't hold that view. Okay, there might be something to that effect going on, but I tend to see black holes as just a ball of black shit. A ball of squashed black shit that light can't escape from. And stuff all can escape from, apart from gamma rays and stuff. Okay, so it may be the point where it actually becomes a black hole, but at some point in the stage of, of the black hole or the evolution of the black hole, at some stage in the evolution of the black hole, shit gets squashed to the point where orbits break down and the particles break down into smaller components. Shit gets squashed into a more primordial suit. Matter is 99% space. Particles are 99% space. What happens when you remove that space? Shit gets sucked down even smaller. Now, I, I basically equate this with the singularity of the black hole. No one knows what happens when you hit the singularity of a black hole and the tidal forces of gravity squash the particles into oblivion. That's basically what's happening. It, it's squashing the particles... It's taking this all the space, it, it's squashing all the space out of the particles, 
it's instead of the particles out here loosely interacting, the particles all get jammed tightly together. Matter is only 1% matter. 99% space. You remove the space, everything gets fucking squished. Squished into its primordial components. Now, my view is that the black hole somehow puts that, and this is where it gets a bit fuzzy, this is where it gets a bit fuzzy with our knowledge. My view is that black holes put that primordial soup of, of chaotic matter back into vacuum energy. Vacuum energy reserves, which is where it originally came from at the creation of the universe. Infinite supply of vacuum energy. The universe is infinite. If the universe is infinite and filled with vacuum energy, we have an infinite supply of energy. And energy, we know damn well that energy can be converted into matter and vice versa. E equals mc squared. If we have an infinite supply of vacuum energy, we theoretically have infinite matter. We practically, never mind theoretically, theoretically and practically have infinite matter. It's just a matter of converting that matter from vacuum energy to matter and from matter back into vacuum energy. The black holes, in my view, more than likely perform this function to pull the matter back into the vacuum energy reserves. So at some point, black holes get to a stage where something goes haywire and matter comes back out of the vacuum energy and we have a big bang. I haven't spoken, I haven't said anything about the scale that I'm talking about here. Don't think I'm talking about a little tiny black hole from one star. Okay, we know smaller black holes combine with each other to form larger black holes. And we know that there is absolutely what we call supermassive black holes. They're at the center of every spiral galaxy. What is going to happen to our universe when all of the stars have gotten sucked into their supermassive black hole in this galaxy and in that galaxy over there and in this galaxy over here and in that galaxy over there? Eventually you're going to have multiple supermassive black holes coming together. Not, not all of them, not all at once. We're not talking about hyperbolic universe theory here. We're just talking about the odd occasion where two of them are going to drift close to each other and be gravitationally attracted to each other. Keep in mind we're talking about a supermassive black hole. This is going to be a vast distance over which they have gravitational effect on each other. Vast distance. They come together, they form an even bigger black hole. We don't know how far this can go. We don't know how many black, supermassive black holes can come together. But once everything in the universe has been sucked into black holes out of existence, there's been heat death of particles. We don't know what is going to happen. We don't know how much of the universe is going to be filled with black holes. But... If one of them gets big enough, something chaotic could happen with it. Or all of the black holes just suck all of their matter and just convert all of their matter back into vacuum energy and leave nothing. At which point, now, going back to space, the space-time fabric being a positive pressure environment, in the case of gravity as an equilibrium force, maybe when there's enough shit back in the vacuum energy, the pressure of vacuum energy will actually overwhelm the pressure of the space-time fabric. Time for release. Now here's where it gets tricky and increases your scope of how this can actually happen. 
maybe we don't need the whole universe gone before another universe is created. And this basically goes into multiverse theory. Right? Now, I fucking hate the word multiverse. I really do. Whatever there, whatever there is, all right, we should call it the universe. Uni means one, only one. The universe should be named the ultimate broader space. Okay, so if everything from our Big Bang, what we regard as the known universe, in multiverse theory, it's called a bubble. It's called a bubble in a broader cosmos named the multiverse. Bubble's fine with me. Personally, I'd rather not call this the universe if it's just a bubble in a broader universe. I'd rather call the outside thing, the greater space, the universe. Or, if we're going to call this the universe, call that the cosmos. But I'd rather call the bigger space the universe, and I'd rather call this the bubble. So I'm going to call, from this point on, onwards in the video, I'm going to call our entire universe our bubble. Now, it's not a bubble with a hard edge. It's not, it's not divided from the outside space. It's just a region of exploded matter floating in a bigger expanse of space. This, our universe, this bubble, our bubble, there could be trillions of them. There could be trillions. And this actually explains dark energy to some extent. Dark energy is the continual fa continually faster acceleration of matter or the energy that contributes to the continually e continually faster acceleration of matter from the center of the Big Bang outwards. The, the ever faster expansion of our universe. Why would it be expanding faster and faster? Because it's gravitationally attracted to possibly billions of things out here in all directions, which is why shit in our universe is expanding in all directions faster and faster as it gets closer and closer to the gravitational force of the surrounding bubbles. When everything from our bubble, when all the stars from our bubble have been sucked into their supermassive black holes at the center of the galaxy, you're going to have a supermassive, you're going to have supermassive black holes drifting through the middle of space, and then super, more supermassive black holes over here and over here, drifting from the end of bubbles over there. So multiple super, supermassive black holes could even be joining from multiple bubbles. From what we know today as different universes. So again, I go back to my point on we don't actually know what the extent of the collection of matter that goes on in a black hole could be. We don't know where the limit of that lies. But eventually, something has to change within the black hole. A black hole cannot suck shit in forever. Something has to change. That matter has to come back out somewhere or sometime. And you've got the re-emergence of the matter that's been collected. The universe has 
the universe continually recycles shit. You can say that matter comes into existence, out of existence, and you can put labels on it like that to say that shit begins and shit ends. All right? But nothing is ever created or destroyed, but transferred from one form to another. And that's all it is. Destruction means conversion of... Destruction of matter means it's conversion into energy. Creation of matter means it's conversion from energy to matter. When it gets created from energy, the little particles of chaos, chaotically interacting each, with each other until they form, as far as we know, random larger particles. Those, those larger particles are formed when formed from more stable and more stable and more stable. Those larger particles are from orbits of particles. When an orbit becomes stable, it has made a particle. It then orbits around a larger particle, creating... Or orbits around a larger nucleus, I should say, and creates a larger particle. So, energy into small matter, small matter into big matter, big matter into bigger matter, bigger matter into bigger matter. And the eventual destruction of the bigger matter crammed back into smaller matter. It's a continual recycling mechanism. And, and then we have this panspermic effect of shit mingling with each other for the purposes of creation, spreading different materials around different parts of the universe so the different materials can interact with each other, spawning life, in, in uh, spawning the chemical reactions that eventually give rise to life, creating more and more complicated chemical reactions. And then you have this another panspermic effect of the black holes being shared with each other around the universe and creating the death of matter. Which, again, the life and death of matter is nothing more than the conversion back and forth the creation of matter is the conversion from energy to matter the destruction of matter is the conversion from matter to energy now if you say that the life of particles in that regard is finite but the universe is infinite, that's an inconsistency. My view of the universe does not have this inconsistency because everything is recycled. Everything goes from energy, from energy to matter, back to energy in a continual cycle. It's always equal conversion. It's whether it's being converted into radiation or, or any other type of energy. And we have infinite size of space-time and, and therefore an infinite supply of vacuum energy within that infinite size. So not only, in, in my view, not only is the universe itself infinite in size and infinite in the amount of energy it holds, but since it's infinite in the amount of energy it holds, and nothing is ever created or destroyed, it's also infinite in resources. So every particle that you're made of, every particle that I'm made of, everything in the entire universe is infinite. <clears throat> Not only infinite in time, but the universe itself is infinite in size, and every particle in it quite possibly is infinitesimally small. Watch my previous understanding on that. <laughs> yeah, watch my understanding. Watch 
my understanding go to quit. Ah. Um, did you want any chocolate shell or not? Uh, no, not really. Because I need to get them out of the oven so I can turn on the banana bread again. Sounds like a personal problem. All right. 